Hi, this is Niles Matip for Money and Markets TV. Over the weekend, my daughter's preschool held its annual fun fair, an afternoon of pony rides, moon bounces, face painting, and general mayhem. And after an hour of volunteering at the Make Your Own Tie-Dye Stand, I was having some trouble locating my own kid among all the activity. Today, as U.S. markets continue their own wild ride, conservative investors face a similar problem, finding quality stocks still worth buying. However, there are still opportunities out there, and one of my favorite ways to find them is by using stock screens. Many of the best programs cost quite a lot of money and are only used by professional investors, but these days you can find high-quality, free stock screeners also. They allow you to select certain criteria such as P.E. ratios, insider buying numbers, and dozens of other metrics. Once you've done narrowing your list, you'll end up with a group of solid stocks that you can then research further. For example, I recently ran a screen looking for the following criteria. First, indicated annual yields above 1% to make sure that income will start flowing immediately. Second, dividend payout ratios of 60% or less to ensure that the income will keep flowing going forward. Third, a five-year average annual return on equity of at least 20% to prove that management is keeping the business moving in the right direction. And last, long-term debt as a percentage of capital under 30% to indicate that the company's balance sheet and its overall financial health are in good shape. With just these four simple criteria, I was able to produce a list of 37 stocks that included some names I've already recommended to my income superstar subscribers in the past, like Coca-Cola and Johnson & Johnson. But in addition to those blue chips, the list also contains some surprises. For one, I found it interesting that China was well represented by companies like PetroChina, Sinook, and China Mobile Limited. And the Brazilian companies Vale and Embraer also made the list. I take this as another sign of the growth happening in various sectors of the emerging markets. The stock screener also highlighted a couple interesting niche plays, including data processor total system services. A quick look at its financials and its recent performance indicated plenty of upside potential. And two of its better known industry peers, Paychex and Automatic Data Processing, have turned out to be very solid buy and hold income stocks. Another stock that made the greatest Starbucks. I was happy to see that, and not just because I love coffee. I'm also confident that CEO Howard Schultz will continue to find new ways to keep Starbucks growing in the right direction through selective expansion here in the US, through new overseas markets, and product line extensions, such as the wine bar concept they're testing in Seattle. Ultimately, of course, it takes a lot more than a couple of good numbers to make a stock a buy. You need to know how near-term conditions, such as interest rates, consumer spending, and other factors, may affect a given company's business. You need to dig deeper into the financials to make sure that other measures aren't going south, even if the criteria for your initial screen are met. And most importantly, you have to consider how each potential new buy fits within your overall portfolio. That's why I use these stock screens as just a jumping off point for further research. But if you're feeling a bit lost as the bull market charges on, they could make the search for quality stocks a lot easier. And I should mention that I did end up recommending two of the names suggested by this stock screen to my Income Superstar subscribers. I'm Niles Matea for Money Markets TV. Thanks for watching.